beef asabuco at home. It's the most delicious and great dish. That's for the show. <laughs> Granolata and osobuco. Beef shanks. This is our dinner tonight. Three servings. Bunch of salt pepper. We're lucky enough to have a great local small butcher shop that just does local meat. That's where we get our bones to make bone broth from, which we're gonna use in this dish. That's where we got these beautiful shanks from. Nice and fresh. There we go. These are gonna braise after searing. And if you don't tie them, they will fall apart and not look as nice on the plate. So you tie it to keep them together. Because this meat is gonna get soft and tender and delicious. Tie them up tight. Don't need the rest of this. Let's cook. We're on the stove and we have a very hot, nice and hot pan that's oven safe, big and wide, a little bit deep, olive oil, sizzling right away, totally good, sear. So good in here already. Great quality meat. Makes a huge difference. These are searing about three or four minutes on one side. I'm gonna flip them over. Take a look. You're great on both sides. Put them out to rest on a tray. vegetables. Gigi got these ready for us and I chopped up some garlic too. The Holy Trinity. Saute these a few minutes until they start to get soft. It smells so good. It's going to get all the good flavor from the meat from the bottom of the pan. This is looking good. Time for the next step. Dry white wine. Just a little bit. Rosemary, thyme, just drop those right in there. Let this cook down for a little bit. All right, our wine has reduced, made the vegetables even softer. Get some tomato in. A lot of recipes use tomato paste, which is great. We like this really good organic tomatoes. That's what we're gonna use today. If you don't have it, tomato paste works great. Have a little bit of that, keep cooking. So after a while, keep stirring 
as you're cooking it down. And the tomato sauce will get nice and cooked and just add to the wonderful aroma that's filling your kitchen. All right, the vegetables are ready. Let's put the meat back in. Beautiful seared shanks. Get them close to the bottom. Feel free to move the vegetable around. Amazing, it's really beautiful. And then we're gonna cover it with uh, beef stock. This is homemade bone broth that we made. Pretty much just to cover. And our oven is preheated to 400 degrees and we're gonna to throw this in for a couple of hours. Real simple, until the meat falls apart. And when it's done, it's done. The oven we go. So osobuco is traditionally served with this great thing called gremolata. You take parsley and garlic and lemon zest, mix it with some olive oil, and it's a great topping to savory dishes. Let's do it. It sounds delicious. Starting out with our lemon and zester. If you think about Mediterranean cuisine, Whenever you have a lot of garlic, you always find a lot of parsley. They go really well together. Something about, you know, garlic can be a very strong flavor. And parsley's natural oils actually kind of neutralize or balance out the garlic. So it makes a great combo. Doing about three cloves of garlic in the squisher. Does not have to be precise. The best thing about cooking at home is that it's more delicious and fresher, and you can do it exactly how you want it. It's a lot of fun. Get that garlic in there and chop our parsley. This is a big handful, flat leaf Italian parsley. In our bowl, olive oil. Some of the lemon we zested, some lemon juice in it. Give it a stir. Maybe a little bit more olive oil to help coat it. And that's ready, we'll put that aside. And in the meantime, I'll show you how to make my cauliflower mash. That's so much like real mashed potatoes, you're gonna love it. Take some cauliflower, this is one pound of frozen cauliflower, and we're gonna turn this into a beautiful kind of mashed potato side dish. So we have salt, we're just gonna do a big couple, big couple pinches of salt. We're gonna put garlic powder on it, just sprinkle that, decide how much you like it. And then this is my secret ingredient, and add some nutritional yeast. If you don't have it, it's awesome. You can get it, you can put it in a lot of dishes. But again, just sprinkle that a bit over that. And this is really fast. This cooks in like 10 minutes until you're ready to puree it. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a sprinkle of water on it. Not even that much water, you can see it there. Just to co cover the bottom of the pan. You don't need to cover it, you're not boiling it. You're putting some fire on it and cooking it for like five or 10 minutes. And while our cauliflower is cooking, we're getting everything else we need ready. This is the other secret ingredient, a good stick blender. Now, if you don't have one, you could use a regular blender. This is just easier to use. So we've got one, two, big chunks of butter. That can just go in here and wait for the cauliflower to finish. And cream. 
Again, it's gonna be about a quarter cup, one, two, and you're done. And that's just gonna make it really smooth and creamy and delicious, like the mashed potatoes. All right, we're checking in on our cauliflower. I'm gonna take the lid off. You see, you still have moisture. You can stir it a little bit. If you still have moisture, it's not done. All right, our cauliflower moisture is just almost gone. I'm gonna catch it before it burns. It's beautifully soft. Let's make a puree. So it's really amazing. This really works best with the frozen cauliflower. It's one of our favorite side dishes. So the hot cauliflower goes right in. Hot cauliflower, butter and cream. Give it a little bit more salt. A couple of big pinches. And puree. And there we go. It's as easy as that. Give it a taste, texture, ooh, beautiful. You guys, this smell is amazing. Let's take a look. Wow, let's check it out. It's falling off the bone. It's, this juice is so incredible. We'll put it back together before getting it on the plate, yum. Yeah, it's, look at this meat. Let's take a look. Taste it. It's just like tender. So let's show how we played it. Hush tail pin, GG. Hello. Hey, babe. <laughs> I have a gift for you. Oh yeah, we have a nice red wine to go with this um, one. That's delicious. We're gonna check that out. Uh, thank you very much, Shelby. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. You having a tasting without me? Mm -mm. Just checking the doneness of the meat, that's all. All right, Okay. let's plate it. Nice ready. We have our collie mash. I showed you how to make that. Yes, this is the best collie mash and it's not getting recognized as much as it deserves. Right. Well, yeah. it goes great with this type of meat dish. If you're if you're not doing low carb, just do mashed potatoes. Polenta. Like Italians like polenta, if that's your thing. So if you want to achieve the yellow color, you can put a little bit of turmeric in it and it's going to be beautiful. Yep. It's in the middle here. Melt it into everything. Carefully get your string off. Okay. How's the smell? Heavenly. So we like rustic style. We're just going to add some vegetables to the plate and some of the juice. Cats are ready. Cats are like <laughs> swarming around <laughs> us here. Thank you. Okay. Go for it. That's for the potato. Beautiful. Oh, bon appetit, everyone. Zest of lemon. Freshly on top of it. That's for the show. <laughs> Gramolata around. For freshness and extra garlic. Bon appetit. It looks very beautiful. <laughs> it smells amazing in here. Kendall, you did a great job. Thank you, Gigi. Mwah. Beef asabuco at home. It's the most delicious and great dish and really juicy, really yummy. Can't wait to dig in. Bon appetit. Subscribe, share with your friends and family. Make this for dinner. Yum. Always subscribe, always like and share. It's the best.